Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is your round table. Let's go around and introduce everyone. Let's go right above me. What's up, Steve? All right. Steve, my bargain comics. Happy to be here. Pass hey, it over to my friend, Mr. Longshort. Hey, thank you, Steve. Mr. Longshort here. Uh, happy to be here tonight. Uh, excited to talk about some comic books. Jessup, what you got, buddy? Hey, what's up? I'm uh, Jessup, half price crook. Uh, Rich. Hey, what's going on, Dollar? Dollar, dollar, bill, <laughs> What's up, everybody? Tony from Blue Game Artifacts. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to be part of the crew. Aaron, what do you got for us tonight? Let's see. Uh, you can catch me on Comic Book Food Chain, and then I have a couple of books for y'all tonight for Deal or Flip Side. Excellent. Let me get this ready. Big money, no <laughs> All right. So let me throw a curveball at you for the first book on Deal or Flip Side. Oh, so, yeah. So I want to give a big uh, shout out to Robert. He, it blew his mind with our game that he spent a few hours thinking of on the Hulk 181 and uh, Ultimate Fallout 4, 1 in 25. So it kind of threw him off and he was like, he's like, man, I spent like three hours thinking of like what, what I would do in that situation. And then even just like also the, uh, the Department of Truth and something is killing the children. So I guess this game is catching on or something. So he threw out this book for me, the uh, Fantastic Four number five, the Doom Creepy World 36 UK version. So it's still the first appearance of Dr. Doom. And let me get to some numbers real quick. This sold for approximately $1,071.82. It's the only one on the GPA census. Uh, there's a total of three graded, one at a 4.5, one at a 4.0, and a signature series 4.0. And then we also have Tales of Suspense 52, which is the first appearance of Black Widow. The 90 day average is 816. The last one sold for 950. There's a total of 1,518 graded and 120 graded at a 4.0. I'll start. I'll take it away, Steve. Okay, so I'm going to do this real real quick. Um, Fantastic Four, Five, the, the Creepy World's number 36. Uh, and anyone who follows me knows I love niches, whether it's you know DCU uh, variants or um, promo comics. I haven't gone gone down the well that. Uh, our friend Robert has of the foreign comics, but th I think they're cool. And uh, m maybe one day I'll go down that rabbit hole. Um, and I, I bet there, this one's a lot harder to find than the Tales of Suspense number 52. I know I'm kind of early compared to a lot of other uh, dealers in, in buying collections, but, you know, I, I can tell you, you know, Tales of Suspense and, and, and these Marvel Sil Silver Age books, they're 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 not that um, uncommon. Um, I, I feel like there's there's a lot of them out there, uh, especially in a like a four zero. Um, I don't think that's like that, you know, like shocking. Um, so, just for the uh, uniqueness factor, um, you know, I, I like I like the UK book. That's my wow. final answer. <laughs> Good stuff, Steve. Um, so this is an interesting one. Um, I really, really, really love Black Widow. One of my favorite Marvel characters. I thought she was really, really well represented in the MCU. You know, frankly, for me, I actually like Amazing Spider-Man 86 better than this book. But, but regardless, she's a great character. Now, that said, if I'm wearing my spec hat, right, Black Widow, unfortunately, is behind us. Um, on the big screen by every major account. And I think Dr. Doom is very much in front of us. Hard to imagine that Dr. Doom doesn't play a major, major role in the MCU and potentially becomes one of the greatest villains ever to be seen on the big screen. So, you know, considering all that, it's the Fantastic Four number five, um, even in the UK version, that that, that seems to be the, the buy here. Um, as much as I love Black Widow, if I'm looking forward I've got to be buying that book. I'm getting a Fantastic Four or Five uh, all day, but I mean, I think you guys know, like, he's my favorite villain. It would look real nice next to my Fantastic Four number five. Also, uh, nothing against Black Widow, and I'm taking Spec out of it because it's personal. Like, it's just I collect Doom books. Like, I've got a short box full of Doom books. 
so that's a no brainer for me. Uh, but I did pick up recently a, a black, like a first Black Widow solo book, uh, and Astonishing Tales was it Ast- or Amazing Adventures? I'm sorry, but yeah, final answer. Uh, Fantastic, fi- Fantastic Four, Five all day. UK version or not? Actually, I kind of like it. I don't know why. Why does it say Creepy Worlds? Were they did they rename everything different? Yeah, so that's the title that you would find it. Like, so for me to find it on the census, I actually had to type in Creepy Worlds number thirty six to actually find it on the CGC census. So the fanboy in me is obviously on uh, TOS fifty two. Um, the investor in me is on the FF five uh, Creepy World, especially with all this uh, Wakanda stuff happening soon, and you know. Atlantis, possibly Fantastic Four. There's just so many opportunities for Doom to get in the MCU. But Ben made it made a uh, a good point, and I have a counter to that because, <clears throat> in the sense that, yeah, um, you know, Scarlett Johansson's gone. Yelena's getting the the mantle, um, but the fact is, is that the the moniker's still there, Black Widow. So. Uh, you know what i've seen in at least the last three four years at least at least at least the last three years you know when there is a new character that takes you know the mantle of the same you know takes the moniker and 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 takes off it really doesn't hurt the first original you know what i'm saying the original character i could see black uh i could see tos 52 kind of um, you know, simmering possibly drop because that would be common sense. But um, I think Catherine Pugh is so wonderful. And even though her first appearance uh, is in Humans 5, but me and Ben believe the first full is in Black Widow 1. And that's that's our opinion. But, uh, you know, the Black Widow moniker is in TOS 52. And I believe as Catherine Pugh goes on, and Black Widow, Yelena goes on, this book's going to continue climbing. It could see some bumps along with those other modern books. So I'll take TOS 52. All right, all right. Um, you know, I'll, I'll make this quick, uh, as quick as I can. First, I guess I think both of these books are are kind of beyond what's going on in the movies. Whether there's no appearance for Doctor Doom or Black Widow in the next 10 years, I think these books are going to still rise, whether they're uh, you know, the normal version or a foreign edition. Rising Tide raises all ships kind of thing. But I do not own a Fantastic Four or Five. I want to desperately. I've been looking for, uh, I've been looking at how to leapfrog into one. So I'm going to go with the Fantastic Four or Five, the Creepy Worlds 36 all day. Uh, whether he's in a, uh, I know obviously it, it's inevitable that he's going to be on screen and it's going to be mind blowing. But even if he wasn't, I, that would be mine all day. I'm right there with you, Crook. In the uh, a friend of mine, Adam from uh, Strange Tales to Collect, we were, we're both in the uh, Simple Man's Comics Patreon. So we have a Discord. I think every couple months we, we're always sending each other links on that book. Uh, we both want to get into it. I've even thought of trying to go have these with them on it but anyways dr doom dr doom dr doom all right uh i want to give another shout out to robert for providing this uh fantastic four number five creepy worlds number 36 i thought it was a really interesting pick i wasn't sure which book to compare with it to be completely honest so that being said out of these two books i would probably have to pick with the fantastic four number five uh you know i don't own the first appearance of dr doom and you know, this seems like an easier way for me to, like, I guess, get in. But at the same time, I, probably not, since there's only three graded, right? Who knows when we'll see another one, like, on eBay or, or just in the market in general. <laughs> Let's move on to the next set of books. So I have to thank Steve for this, because he's like, have you ever thought about comparing a CBCS book and a CGC book? I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. Let, <laughs> let me pick out two books. So I picked a... Uh, a, an Amazing Spider-Man's uh, number 300 at a 6.5, and then also a True Red, White, and Black number one, a CBCS 9.8. So some numbers real quick. 
For Amazing Spider-Man 300, there's a total of 24,703 graded, 456 out of 65, 1,089 out of 9.8. Uh, for the 6.5 grade, one sold for $510 in March. The 90-day average is 482. And for a 12-month average, it's 327. All right. So ASM 300 is one of the most iconic covers of all time. Probably the most homage cover of all time. I think most of us could agree on. I, and I, I've got to be clear. I um, Unlike most, I don't put a lot of valuation difference between um, CGC and CBCS. I know most people just go to CGC, but if I'm buying books, I'm happy to take the discount from CBCS. Um, I really, really love Isaiah Bradley. And I got to be honest, after episode two of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, the way that that uh, Carl Lumbly um, portrayed him, I'm excited about what they can do with this character. Um, I think he's super important within sort of the Marvel mythos. And I think given how they laid out the MCU, they can do a lot really, really, really cool things with this character. Um, um, I love this book. Um, so for me, and I own both of them, um, I would be buying at this point, um, truth, red, white, and black, um, nine, eight CBCS final answer. I'll, uh, go next and, uh, probably give a surprising answer. So, uh, uh, so first of all, let me say, you know, I'm, um, a, a DC guy, you know, I'll never claim to be a Marvel expert. You know, I I'm reading a lot more Marvel these days than, 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 than DC, but still in my, in my heart, you know, in my, in all of the, you know, the, the 12 year old heart that all of us have when a lot of us discovered, you know, comics or, or reading them. So I, I don't worship at the altar of ASM 300 like a lot of people do. Um, and in fact, it, it came out after I stopped collecting comics uh, as a kid. Um, I remember Secret Wars 8. I remember ASM 252. But 300 was definitely um, past when I I stopped collecting. So so yeah, I don't I don't worship at that uh, altar. I, I understand the investment. I understand the attraction. Possibly it, it, it could be a a, a, a better in, investment, there, but there's so many, and this is such a low grade. Um, it's hard for me to pick it. The truth, red, white, and black. You know, uh, Ben was very early on onto this, and kudos kudos to him. You know, I, I think they could, depending on audience response, um, do some type of uh, prequel series with him and and uh, uh, fleshing out, you know, his story. That there's certainly a lot more to be told there. Would love to see that. Um, we're seeing how the market's reacting to just uh, seeing him in the, in the present uh, day uh, MCU. Because of the low low grade for the ASM and because I, I that's just not the altar I worship at, and we have a 9.8 here, uh, I'm going to pick the truth, red, white, and black number one. All right, I'll jump in next. Thank you, Steve. Um, I'm going uh, to – this wasn't really planned, but I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, a grading uh, snob. I shouldn't be. I should – on many books, I should be willing to settle for lower grades. Um, but kind of like Mel V, I, I really want – if I'm going to spend a lot of money on it, I'd like it to be a higher grade. Obviously, with the, the Amazing Spider-Man 300 – you know, a 9.8 is not the only valuable book uh, for that book. But still, a 6.5, I, I, don't, I don't think I would ever really chase a 6.5. And granted, that, that may double in the next couple of years, just as, um, as all of them do. But I don't mind CBCS. I've, it's not my first choice. I don't think it's uh, – I don't see the, the big difference between them, though. Uh, but especially at this price, obviously we're we're speaking as this book is skyrocketing. I mean, I I just reached over. I actually I bought one myself. <laughs> this was purchased two weeks ago. I wasn't sure if the seller was going to cancel my order uh, as they were kind of rising at the moment. Um, and actually, it's it surpassed the number that's on the screen right now. I think the last one sold was was more around seven hundred. 
Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of stories you could tell there. Uh, I think it would be fun to do like a Band of Brothers style Disney Plus show with, uh, you know, with with uh, with Isaiah Bradley. So I'm going to go with the truth book. <laughs> I sense a uh, trend. Yeah, it, I, I'm going with the truth and, I, and I'm not I'm by no means um, a grade snob. Um, but with with modern books, and I know it's, you know, it, it's not a modern, but it's still considered modern. I, yeah, I, I'm not buying a six five of that book, even for the flip. I mean, if you, you don't have enough time to, I guess, maximize your profit if you're looking for profit and that's your end goal with the CBCS uh, to crack that and then uh, resubmit it to CGC because you can probably make another three to $400 with it uh, in, in the times we live in now. Um, and I, my guess is, is with, I, I think they have quality there. Um, I think they grade just as hard, if not harder. Um, so I, I would have the utmost confidence in, you know, cracking that book and resubmitting it to CGC to make another, you know, 300, Four hundred dollars, and and who knows where that book's going to eventually land if he, if they do use him in Falcon Winter Soldier, I don't think that we've seen the last of him. Uh, it's just like a gut feeling. I, I can't imagine uh, with his performance that what do he have? Maybe two minutes of screen time in the second se uh, second episode, and uh, I'm like, I want to see more. Like I hope they use him again. But uh, he's I think an actor, really watch, don't you think, Jessup? I mean, he's like he's absolutely. Sucked a big actor like in the in the performance I, I hope i'm not overstating it, it was just moving i mean i thought it was amazing Absolutely. yeah i mean it's like there, there's no way you cast that guy to give him two minutes of screen time I, I don't see why that would uh unless you're only using him to introduce uh his boy so i but i i don't know if they're thinking that far ahead and then sometimes I think, wow, they, they definitely think very far ahead when they do these yeah, movies. No. My gut instinct so, is this. You know, you look that they're carrying on the Iron Man legacy in, you know, the Riri show and the Iron, um, the Armor War show. I, I believe they're going to carry on the Cap legacy as well. It's too, it's too big. It's too important. Right. So I, I, I think he'll be tied to that, I think. I and mean, I'm just guessing, but it, it just seems like it's too important not to follow through on a story like that, um, in my opinion. Somebody told me, and, and don't quote me on this, but because I, I heard it, I didn't, I didn't notice it when I watched Doctor Strange. But somebody said in Doctor Strange, that in the library, that there was a book missing, and that it was the yes. Dark Hole. And uh, and then it, it came up in WandaVision. It's like, so, so you think like that far back, they knew that they were going to do WandaVision. And that the dark hold was going to be missing. That blew my mind. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, it's like the the, the retcons of all retcons. It's like, because <laughs> how old is Doctor Strange? It's at least five or six years old, right? I mean, five or six years ago, they knew they were going to do WandaVision, and they knew that they they wanted to have that book missing. So, or it it played out in a story that I, I don't know. Kudos to them, hmm. you know. Uh, that to me, that's like, and also like th whoever picked up on that, because uh, <laughs> kudos to that person. That that that's yeah. also truly amazing that you paid that close of attention, uh, unless it was like in somebody's Easter egg video that somebody caught. That you know, that I think it was on our channel. I think it was uh, Laura's daughter on their uh, reveal for. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so shout out to Bird City, right? I have a really quick question, and thank you, Aaron, for posting something or uh, having a, an option between CGC and CBCS. Uh, something came up actually in the chat just since last week about CBCS, and I wanted to just really quick, for a modern book that comes out, if, you, if you're if you looking to sell, if you're looking to flip something quickly, how many of you would send to CBCS instead of CGC just for that quick turnaround time? just to possibly be one of the first on the market. Would that be worth it to you? Tony, it's a tough question. I would say right now the market is still giving a big, big premium to CGC. Now I want to be clear. I'm a buyer all day long of CBSCS graded books. 
Absolutely. If you're looking to maximize on a flip, you're better off paying up for the quicker turnaround in CGC, I think, at the moment, than going to CBCS. Now, does that change over time? We'll see. But um, based on what I'm seeing, it looks like CG still is still the way to go if you're trying to get the, the most bang for your buck. Right. They seem to be king, and this argument's been on Facebook and it, almost every discussion with every, everybody I'm friends with when we sit down and talk about grading graded books. But the uh, Dennis Barger is a huge huge fan of CBCS. Now that uh, uh, the Action Comics, uh, the one one hundred, it it holds currently GPA high GPA. Uh, he sold it for two grand. Uh, Calvin Ellis last name. Ellis. Calvin, Ellis. Yeah. So that book sold for two grand. The the previous sale was a CGC and it sold for two fifty. Now it also was riding the coattails of the news or the speculation that Calvin's going to be in the, the the next movie. Um, however, that it blew it out by thirteen hundred dollars or seventeen hundred dollars or you know yeah. th that was huge. However, it was the only one on the market. Also, so there, there are some outliers, but I think if the book is right, I don't think it matters. Like, I, honestly, I don't think it matters. Or, 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 or under the impression, like, oh, well, it's a CBCS book. I'll list it lower. Like, I, I, I will. I, if, there, if if I have the choice between either one and, and the CBCS is lower, I'll buy it every single time yeah. if it's for my PC, without question, it, every right. single time. Well, okay. I think, so, uh, I think since too, oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, so real quick, so speaking of like numbers and stuff like that, for the Truth Red, White, and Black, there was a total of five graded on the CBCS census, four out of nine eight, and one out of nine four. For the CGC census, there's 154 graded, 76 out of nine eight. The last sell for a CGC uh, was nine hundred dollars. Yeah. So I'd say the last one I saw was seven fifty. So nine hundred. Holy shit. Yeah. No oh, so. But the interesting part, the same day that CBCS book sold, uh, two CGCs had sold. One was for four ninety five, and the other was for five hundred. The same day. Okay. So what did, so you know, really so what did CBCS go for, Aaron? Sorry. Four fifty. So it wasn't that far. Fifty bucks. It, yeah, yeah. It was. It was really not that far apart. Yeah. Like, okay. You know, because you know we're talking about the same day. So. Right. I I just say it's it's hard to catch lightning in a bottle, and that's why you know my my goal is is not to be first to market. Um, you know, I think that's a hard a hard a hard goal to to chase. I mean, I think if I really you know really really wanted to do that, I just pay the walkthrough fee at CGC uh, oh, because yeah. I'm. I'm a CGC homer uh, as far as selling, and like Ben, I'll I'll, I'll buy CBCS, but uh, but as far as selling, if you don't have a hot book, it, it's hard enough to to move it if if it, if it's not hot, and to have you know the uh, a non CGC graded, you know that that makes it all the much harder. But I understand we're talking about a hot book, so um, I, I think my what I do is is do walkthrough, but I I don't I'm not right. really interested in being in that game. Yeah, it's that would be a tough game, and it would only come up in certain circumstances. Maybe like ENIAC number one. I mean, the first view of that book sure. went really high, and who knows if it's going to stay there. But yeah. anyways, all right, let's move on to our next subject. All right, so um, listen. A, a few disclaimers before we get going into the subject here, because I know it is very much a love-hate uh, relationship with most people, with the emphasis on the hate. <laughs> the books that we put together in this slideshow um, are by no means a recommended buy list. I want to be very, very, very clear about that. What we're doing with this list is looking at some retail ex retailer exclusives that were sold last month that we found to be interesting. Um, love them or hate them, retailer exclusives are a part of the modern market. Um, to be perfectly honest, they are not a great area to speculate on, in my opinion, just given the high buy-in. 
Um, but it's hard to argue that some of the art and the covers on these books aren't simply stunning. You know, in full disclosure, I'll buy one or two of these um, every month or so. Um, but it's really because I love what uh, either the artist or the character and not because I think that they're, they're, I'm necessarily going to get a great flip on them. Um, so, um, so the books we're seeing here, like I said, are really just books that we found interesting. Uh, but by no means, please do not go out and rush and buy these books. If you happen to like them, so be it. Most of them are sold out. Um, it's just a collection of books that, that were sold uh, last month um, that we thought might be noteworthy to touch on. I don't know if anybody else has any comments around that um, before we get started. And well, I think just to be clear, we're not we're clearly not promoting any books, right? No, not at all. Um, and I, I got to be honest. So we'll, we'll talk about some of the books here. Um, there's some best practices for retail exclusives, and some of the books on these lists don't follow them, right? I, I really frown upon retailers who won't disclose how many books they're printing. If, if they're asking you to put up 40 or $50 for a set and they don't tell you how many they printed, I don't think that's acceptable. Um, um, but, um, but that's the game. So you, if you're going to buy these books, go into it eyes wide open. Um, but be very careful on the speculation aspect of them because oftentimes, more than often, it doesn't play out as you might expect. Yeah. All right. Uh, Aaron, you want to go to the first one? Yep. Okay, so the first book on the list, and frankly, the book that um, that really sparked the idea is Silk Number no. 1 uh, by Ji Hung Lee. Um, he is one of my very favorite artists. He's done one of my very favorite modern covers. This book, in my opinion, is just breathtakingly stunning. The way that the light bounces off the webs, um, uh, it's really quite brilliant. By all accounts, this book was limited to a thousand in the Virgin that we're seeing here, and um, and and just a book that really caught my eye. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on it, but um, uh, just one that um, that was simply stunning to me. I just want to say real quick. I think it does really play off the, very well with the one in one hundred that Ji Hung Lee did for the series. So if you're if you're going to get the one in one hundred. You know, I think this would pair up very nicely with that. Okay, uh, on to the next one. Uh, Department of Truth, you know, one of the, um, certainly one of the of, of the hottest independent books out on the market right now. Uh, this is another artist um, that I frankly um, um, am very drawn to. Gerard Perel uh, has done um, some simply breathtaking covers. Uh, one of my favorite covers from 2020 was a Black Widow 1 in 25 that he did. Flew completely under the radar, but absolutely stunning. Um, he did this cover. The colors pop on this. This book is, um, it looks like it's it's sort of a nod to 9-11, um, as we can see in the background, um, but but a cover that really caught my eye that I thought was, it was really quite, quite, quite beautiful. Yeah, I haven't seen this one. I, I, I do love this kind of stylistic almost like Dave Aha type type art or the, the, the retro. Yeah, it's, it's. I yeah, and when I, when I, I hadn't seen it either. Um, I had missed it. I think I might've considered it. Um, I'm not sure who Izzy's comics is, to be honest with you. They're the, they're the group that put it out. Uh, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that, that particular store. Um, but um, yeah, just a, just a beautiful, a beautiful cover. Yeah. yeah I'll say this about the department of truth, I guess, mainly retailer variants. That there are so many of them, um, and I am seeing a lot of repetition of, you know, the the woman in the red dress and the star faced man. I feel like, and and this is you know nothing against Izzy's or in particular, because there, there, like I just said, there's a lot of covers that use these two obvious, you know, compelling characters from Department of Truth, but it, it's just it's getting to be a bit overwhelming and that's just that's just my opinion yeah I know. It might be a little bit of a, a one of those like french posters like from the uh early 1900s or late 1800s yeah that, that's kind of cool yeah i mean that's the problem with uh, with with retailer variants you your your pockets can get emptied pretty quick if you're if 
because like i said there's just so many department of truth ones um yeah i by no means chase these because you will empty your pockets um uh for me this was a, a more of an artist play um uh, but we'll find as we get onto this list this is not the last department of truth book we're gonna see so. hell no <laughs> okay <laughs> all right Department of Truth number seven. This is another one. This is a beta variant. Um, I'm not familiar with this group. Um, Mighty Mel V uh, suggested this one um, from Beta's Thingamajiggets. Um, like I said, I'm not. I'm not familiar. I have no idea. Uh, they did not disclose um, what the print one is. This. I, I don't care for that. Given the size of the store, it's probably relatively small. But but I, I really think. A best practice in this area is for retailers to tell their customers what they're buying into. Uh, I think that's super important. Um, uh, what Mel wanted to point out in this book is, frankly, one of his friends um, was actually quite disturbed by it. You know, if, if you look um, below the woman in red, you know, there's a plane flying into the Twin Towers, and um, uh, one of Mel's friends had a had a very personal experience with that tragedy. And um, and uh, and then this sort of elicited a uh, a, a fairly strong response. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily rush out to buy the book based on that by any means, but uh, but something that he felt was we, we should we should put on the list. Well, here we go again, Department of Truth number nine. Um, um, so this is a little ways out. This um, this is a Banksy homage. Um, which um, what was quite interesting. Um, um, you know, what we're seeing with um, with store variants are, you know, retailers are gravitating towards the hot books naturally, right? The books that are gonna attract the, the widest audience, which is part of what dilutes them, to be perfectly honest. Um, that said, um, I believe, Aaron, this was a book that you had spotted. I think it's pretty clever. Um, yeah. You know, I like the fact that it's uh, it, it's limited. It seemed to move quite quickly, um, um, but you know, as I think Steve um, aptly pointed out, that you know this book is you know sort of treading on the same themes that we've seen before uh, for Department of Truth. I, I wish I had caught this book like when it was still available. Uh, I have never bought from Collector's Choice Comics before. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a really neat like play on like street art. It's a cool book. I mean, I, I like it. I'm not sure I necessarily would have would have paid the price for it, but it, it, it's certainly eye catching uh, for sure. Banksy really that sloppy with his stencil work with the overspray, or was it? <laughs> it's a little, kind of a joke, but I mean, I I, I I know a lot of graffiti artists and a lot of people that stencil, and uh, normally they don't. They're not that. I mean. Graffiti arts are very, uh, e even with a stencil, like you can get that spray to come out. I'm sure it was part of, part of the, you know, the Banksy homage thing, but I love that cover. I would, I would, I probably would have, I wouldn't have, I promised myself I wouldn't buy any more. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love them. I just love them from afar. Or if I really feel like I'm going to need them, I wait because that seems to be the, the best rule of thumb. Yeah, that, that's a good point for, from Jessup right there, right? Particularly if you miss one of these, do not, by any means, do not rush out and and buy them at the inflated eBay prices. Um, they'll typically come in, or what you'll see is is that the retailers will have held some back and they'll put some back out. So um, be patient with these. There's almost, I, I can't think of really any instance where you have to rush and sort of pay a premium for this sort of stuff. If you feel you have to have it, um, and listen, the good ones are really good, right? Let's be honest, the good ones are really good, um, but um, but not something I, I think anybody should ever feel the need to chase. Be patient, and frankly, that's that can be sort of spread across spec in general, right? If if you're buying comics, like if oh, something, sure. just right. let it breathe a little bit, you'll get a shot at a better price, most likely. Don't get that FOMO. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? All right, so this is uh, this is Beta Ray Bill number one by Daniel Warren Johnson. Uh, this is um, done by the guys at the Hall of Comics um, uh, in Southboro, Massachusetts. Um, they limited it to six hundred. Um, this hasn't sold out. You know, this is an homage. I, there's something eye catching about this. 
Uh, Daniel Warren Johnson seems to be one of those artists all the writers love to work with. A guy who's up and coming, you know, just one that caught that caught my eye that I thought was pretty neat. There's there's a um, there's a trade dress version of this, I believe, at around an 800 print run um, that looks a little bit. Um, more faithful to the original um, Thor issue that it was taken from, but this this sketch version um, I thought looked pretty cool, so just dropped it on this list. Yeah, it might be interesting to know uh, what the I, I, I think across the board uh, what the what the price was or what the price is uh, for something, you know, because you know for like yeah, you know for. I mean, actually, you know, we saw convention, even though convention variants are a bit different, you know, we saw a convention variant recently that was on sale for five dollars and in our group um, that that's probably pretty unlikely for this. But, you know, uh, I know prices vary widely, you know, I would maybe. Say this, yeah, I would say this, Steve. I mean, usually the way that these retailers do this, they have a virgin in a trade dress. And in order to get the virgin, which is almost always more limited in the trade dress, you right. have to put them both generally. Right. And that price point I have seen, most of us have seen somewhere between 40 and 50 bucks. Let's say. Yes. So right. for, for call it 50 bucks, you get two comics. That's a pretty stiff buy-in, frankly. Um, you couldn't chase all the books here for that and, and really sort of, you know, sleep well, I don't think, but um, but that that's usually the setup um, for a lot of these these books. I, I think, so. yeah, I think with a lot of these, you know, you just have to, if you're going to buy, buy what you like. Don't buy it as an investment if it if it doesn't go anywhere. Like a lot of these, or maybe they're hot out of the gate and then they cool down. You know, I think I think some of us believe in the long term, just like we're seeing 20 years after some of the like graham crackers, you know, the uh, Masters of the Universe gold foil, that's, you know, suddenly taken off because of the Invincible preview. But in the mean, but, you know, while supply is dwindling out there and demand is, is building over the years, you, you have to live with it. So, you know, I think a good advice to, uh, to follow would be to, to buy what you like. Because uh, if you're buying it for other reasons, you could be, uh, and you don't like it, you could be not liking it for a long time, and then kicking yourself about what you paid for it. Yeah, that, that, that's that's really really good advice um, on these. I mean, the, the 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 number of store exclusives that have really paid off from a spec standpoint are relatively small. Um, you know, just like the regular comics in. To be honest, but, sure. but given the buy-in here, uh, you're out a lot more. Um, so um, be very, very careful specking on these. If you don't love it, don't buy it. Um, you know, I think you'll probably. I can, I can see with a book like this, you know, where it uh, there are homage collectors where you know they might oh. have twelve different covers of this Beta Ray Bill. Um, I, I'm guilty of that too. I always chase the Purple Rain homage books. So, like Frankie's has done a couple of those. I, I do feel like I need to get them to complete my collection. In in that respect, I don't chase them for for spec value or to sell necessarily. And I, I'm not a big. We talked about this right before we came on, but I'm not a huge. I wouldn't call myself a huge retailer variant fan, but I would say every, like you, about once a month or twice a month, there's something that catches my eye. I don't think there's anything wrong with it necessarily. They have kind of a bad rap. Um, and I think as speculators too, sometimes we always, you always hear speculators worry about or, or sellers worry about or what's going to hurt the the market. Oh, there's too many retailer variants. There's going to be way too, a flood of the, the ratio variants for this book or that book, Silk number one or something. Um, yeah. Sometimes I remind myself to step back a little bit. We need to, we do need to support our retailers. These retailer variants are a very important uh, source of income for a lot of these retailers. Not that we should go out and buy every one that they put out, but you know, maybe we shouldn't, you know, insult their uh, their 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 income at the same time. They have a right Absolutely to, not. To, to... Yeah, I I want to actually, you know.
give kudos to the Hall of Comics and all the other retailers because, uh, you know, I know I've uh, bought uh, bulk copies of, of comics before. And I don't think until you've sat in their shoes, sitting there with, you know, 600 virgins and, you know, 3,000 trade dress, how tough it is to actually sell, sell those. Um, right. You know, because there are only a limited number of Thor 337, you know, collectors out there. Um, and, you know, then, then you might have your Simonson fans and your Beta Real Rave Bill fans. It is, it is tough to take on that much inventory and then, um, and then turn it over. So th they're taking huge risks. I'd also love to hear from retailers. Um, I think we get in the frame of mind that some of these retailers aren't revealing the print runs um, because there's something to hide. I would be very interested in hearing from retailers if there are other reasons um, why they aren't talking about the print runs. And I have some ideas, but I don't want to... Um, I don't want to throw them out there. I'd rather hear those from the retailers themselves. And I, I think, the, and the ideas I have are not nefarious. They are ideas that I I know. Um, I don't I don't want to characterize them, but they're very. I think they're very genuine, actually. Um, so I would love to hear from retailers. If I think if someone uh, wanted to come on, um, you know, we'd welcome that as well. So. Um, th this something is maybe we, yeah, it's something yeah. maybe we should think about next month when we do another review. But I think that's a a, a great suggestion, Steve. Yeah. A really great suggestion. Oh no, I just wanted to say uh, shout out to Hall of Comics because uh, I made a shit ton of money off <laughs> of uh, <laughs> the Hulk number one. This is back in the Google Plus days, like when I used to sell comics. I really don't sell anymore. I've had a, a couple smatterings in Facebook and what. You're just a hoarder. Uh, yeah, and and also I just don't have time. Right. Uh, I, I I work a full time job, and then I, I I I do work for people on the side, and and then I do this, and then I got five kids, and yeah. I, I really don't have a shit ton of time. But shit, back yeah. back then, uh, they had a Hulk number one, and it was a one eighty one homage. Uh, they did a black and white. They did a Deadpool variant where he's kind of waving, but it was like. Uh, it was X twenty three and She Hulk. Uh, I have a set. Yeah, it's a great one. A great one. I waited so, for that set to come out, and so I got it cheaper than like when it first came out. It was like shooting up like crazy. So like I waited like a year, and it dropped down, and it was I, like back to retail price. I pre ordered. Now this this might sound terrible, but I pre ordered the uh, a set of nine eights. So I got a pre ordered set of CGC nine eights. And then I got like three more sets because I'm like, oh, dude, people are going to love this. And then was able to sell my nine eights for, I think, a, eh, I could be misquoting, but I want to say two or three thousand uh, dollars. And the buy in was, wasn't that much for like the pre pre ordered CGC nine eights. I mean, I want to say I, I, I netted about like $2,500 off of that purchase which was amazing and i'm definitely telling you do not ever do that yeah. <laughs> that's the wrong message so this that is not the message yeah, this, but, but uh yeah. but, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying do that. that that was absolutely lightning in a bottle like i but however if i was stuck with them i wasn't sad about it but at all but my intention was to flip them and somebody on ebay that I kept getting offers. Like I, I had it, like, I think I was the highest person price at that point in time. And this was easily three or four years ago when this came out, if I, if I'm not mistaken, but, uh, uh, he, he got me down a little bit, but I had it overpriced. So I was like, all right, as soon as it got to the price, I was like, cool, gone. Like, you, you know, there, you can make money on, on the flips on those, but it's like penny stocks. Like I would definitely shy away 
from. Yeah, if you're not careful, right. you're going to you're, you're going to get stuck holding the bag. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like it's not a it it, it is a, a nail biter the entire way through. All right, so so, so GI Joe two eighty here. This is a homo- an homage of an homage of an homage. Damn it! Um, I missed this one. <laughs> How do I miss uh, this <laughs> one? Did this one moves quickly? Um, I think Brian McClay had it on one of the one of the shows. It, it went quickly. Uh, something to be aware of, right? So this was so hot, they the retailer immediately put it out a daylight version of this yep. um, that was effectively the exact same image. But damn it, that's the, sick. Not <laughs> not with the cool lighting and Fuck. Uh, and uh, yeah, that one's still available. This this one. This one went pretty quickly, but um, I think we all remember um, uh, the original version of this. But uh, anyways, on to the next one. All right, so this is uh, Miles Morales 25 by Raza, the comic mint. Um, This sold pretty quickly. This was the first homage to Ultimate Fallout 4 with Miles that I remember seeing. I know that they've homaged that cover. There was an Archie one. Over the holidays, there's been a few others. Um, this is the first one with Miles that I recall seeing, so I thought it was noteworthy to, to throw up here and, and at least reference. It seemed like a like a pretty cool cover, and uh, like I said, nothing I would necessarily chase, um, but but a book that you know we might see again in the future at some point. Yeah, I actually, I I, I probably before I met you guys, I probably had never <laughs> bought a store variant, but. Um, uh th- this one was one i actually wanted to to get uh, and I, I i didn't and uh, for multiple reasons you know i i think the the uf4 you know hadn't seen anyone homage that uh uh yet um the other thing too is raza i i just i i i love this du- this dude i mean every cover he does he knocks it out of the park i don't know a whole lot about him I need to find out more. He 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 is so uh, talented; it, it, it's unbelievable. Um, so, um, this is actually one that 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 I that I'd shell out for. Yeah, I, I agree. I love Raza. Superb. Looks like a photograph. Yeah, or at least at least oh, mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, the Raza covers that he did for those WWE books. Yep, those were awesome. Those were amazing. Yeah, he, he he's he's something special. All right, I, I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy in the room ever, um, but I I saw this one come through and I was like, wow, the, the colors on this are just amazing. So this is Mike Mayhew. I believe this was put up by KRS. And listen, I want to be clear that. I know that some of these books are sold through multiple retailers and that one of them is actually the one that sponsored it. I can't always connect those dots based on what I'm seeing. So any retailers out there that I didn't give the proper credit to, I apologize. Um, I, I, I just put what I saw um, who was selling it. So I know that some of these are thro- so, sold through multiple stores. I it's I can't connect the dots. So anybody that I miscredited, Please don't come guns a blazing. Um, I, I I did I did the best I can as I put this together. Like I said, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but this this cover to me was was really quite stunning. Just thought it was worth, worth talking about. Mayhew's dope. Yeah, I was gonna say Mayhew. You know, he usually starts out pretty hard. Like whenever he's drawing a cover, uh, I do want to say like I think this also appreciates the artist. Uh, so. You know, I think it supports them a lot and gets their name out there too, so other publishers can see them and other stores and all that. So, Aaron, I mean, that's a great point. Something I wanted to touch on. Um, you know, oftentimes I will actually, when there's a book I like, I will actually go buy it directly from the artist, and I'm not sure what their deal is with the store. It appears to me that the store gives them some issues to sell um, as part of whatever the deal was. So Ji Hong Lee is an artist I really like, and I will always buy directly from him because he'll post whatever he's put out uh, versus whatever store is selling it. So I'll go to the artist because I assume that that revenue goes directly to the artist. So, um, I, th- I think that's a really point. Point. Yeah, Absolutely. I do the same thing. Good advice. Uh, next, 
Another Department of Truth. Uh, this was um, another Mighty Mel V uh, suggestion. Uh, ben Oliver. Uh, this covers um, Super Creepy, but uh, he asked that we we add it to the list. Uh, this Scott's Collectibles. I'm not I'm not familiar with who they are, um, but this is relatively low uh, print run at 350 uh, from a title that's uh, pretty hot. Pretty hot. Um, I think as Steve identified, the Starface Man. The woman in red, you know, we're kind of seeing the same themes over, over and over in, in these covers. Um, but uh, I know Ben Oliver has a following, and um, you know, we, uh, we 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 just put it out there as uh, as an interesting book. Yeah, he's oh, talented. So, yeah, Scott's Collectibles. They're based out of the UK. So the Peach Momoko, something is killing the children. Original art I bought. They're the ones that put out that cover uh, for issue fourteen. Very so, cool. Fun fact. Cool. Cool. Black Friday number one. I'm not reading this title, but um, the cover really caught my eye. Um, Alan is it Qua, Alan, is it? cover. Um, I, I remember that he did a cover for um, that I thought was really fantastic for um, crossover number one with like a room full, a comic shop full of superheroes. This is sort of based on that same theme, same idea. Um, it's from the guys at Hive Comics. They've been on the channel before. They're really good dudes. Um, I really like the content and, and their vibe. But I saw this and I thought, wow, this is this is pretty cool looking. So I just thought it was worth uh, worth pointing out. Is this a scout book? Is that correct? Black Friday? Um, Black Friday is scout, I believe, unless somebody wants to double check me on that one. Um, good question, Tony. I, so. I kind of I have... I feel like I should give props to the retailers who dare to do retailer variants on lesser known books. Cause that's, I mean, like Steve was saying, it's a risk anyways, let alone on a book that people don't know anything about. So. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Scout. It is scout. Yeah. And then Alan Paul, right. he's been killing it on his covers. Um, all right. So, so this comic I, I didn't buy, I kind of want to buy it. This is Miguel Mercado, um, X Men number nineteen, um, White Queen, um, Emma Frost. It's just stunning. I mean, absolutely stunning. I'm not sure how yeah, she walks. To be honest with you, but it's just. I mean, this is a work of art. I mean, this is part of the reason why we're talking about store exclusives because some of the covers are are genuinely works of art. Uh, but this one, I thought was was beautiful, um, and uh, and and worthy of discussion. Yeah, it's great, great use of, of of white. I don't know how else to say it, but uh, yeah, wow, that is uh, that's impressive. And I think that's a a great point too. Is that uh, you know with the store variants, most of the time you're 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 buying for the cover. I right? you know you don't even. Uh, you know, I, and I know the, the you know it, it upsets some people that people aren't buying for the content, but uh, I believe that um, comics can be uh, collectibles and can be appreciated just based on the, on the cover alone. And, um, and this one, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, um, Ben, but, uh, but obviously, you know, um, yeah, I think we've discussed a lot in our hangouts, you know, a lot of this is, you know, like a lot of art, it's it's in in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I think we've got one or two more on here. So this is another uh, Ji Hung Lee Scarlet Witch cover. Um, you know, there's a lot of these out there, and um, I, I've got to be honest. Um, you know, what my biggest my, my biggest concern about this one we touched on it before is how many of them are being produced you know they're, they're charging a premium price for it it's certainly a beautiful cover uh, but the fact that they're not willing to disclose um how many are being made is a big ask for me to have consumers to step up and put up their money not having the full information so while the cover is absolutely beautiful you know to pay 50 dollars for a virgin in a trade dress and, and not know what you're buying into is a difficult one is a, is a difficult one for me I, I like i said i think best practice should be disclosing uh the print count on all of these but i will echo steve's uh um point um 
maybe we need to bring on a retailer to decide why they don't want to do that. Um, I assume that, you know, when you see something like this, you're talking about 1500 to 2000. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, but I really think that they should be um, letting their, letting their customer know how many they are. But um, like I said, Xi Hong Li, you got a soft spot. You know, it, it is a beautiful cover. Um, but, but something, if you're going to be buying these to go into with eyes wide open, um, because it's a lot of money to put up to, to, to not know exactly what you're buying. But if you love the artist, love the character, it may not make sense to you, but, um, you know, otherwise, um, you know, just be careful. I, I, the, the way the hands are drawn on this is just amazing. It's, it's awesome. You don't you don't see them try to pull that off in, in the comic art. You see that on screen sometimes, but yeah, he, he's quite a talent. I mean, I, I get a real soft spot for this guy. I mean, he's, he's really something else. And, um, I, I like to buy a lot of what he does. And yeah, this one was just, you know, while it doesn't tick all the boxes of, of something I'd necessarily like to see the, the cover itself was just, was just beautiful. So I thought we'd include it, um, in the discussion. Do y'all want to go over pickups? Yeah. Do you mind if I go first? Because I actually have to hop here. Do you mind? I got to get a couple. So is is that cool? Yeah. yeah. Go for it. You're all, all queued right. up anyways. So. All right. So I picked up a few things. Um, so listen, I I, I think um, Emily Van Camp is that her name in in Winter, in Falcon Winter Soldier? Sharon Carter is 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 yep. is awesome. She kicked some major ass in the most recent episode. So I grabbed, um, this is her first appearance. This is not in the main continuity, obviously, as, as Captain America. I don't think they go there. I think there's a small chance they might, but it's also a newsstand. So I figured, why not? Why not grab it? So um, a book that I grabbed. This is A Next Number Four. Um, <laughs> this is quite genuinely a dollar book. Uh, but it's her it's her only uh, solo title that I've been able to find, and she shares it with Nick Fury. Um, it was a two issue series, so all of two issues. Um, um, but this is uh, this is um, Agent Thirteen's uh, only solo series that I've ever been able to identify. I mean, bang, these are two and three dollar books. I mean, quite generally, cover or less. So grab those. Um, I found this Canto number one second print. This was pretty nice. short printed. Nice. Um, don't know where this goes long term, but it seemed like a pretty smart play. And as I looked at the other covers, this one was one of the cooler ones. So I figured um, let's grab it. So everybody knows I love Miles Morales. I bought another one of these. All right. Um, Wildly underappreciated, I think, relative to what you have four is doing right now. I don't know what it is about this book. It's a one in fifteen on a higher print run, and you don't never see them. They don't no, come I, I, I had one in nine eight, and I sold it a while back. And I rarely regret selling books, but that one definitely. I yeah, know I, I sold it super cheap. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but this book is far rarer than its ratio suggests. But anyway, yeah. so grab that. No regrets, Steve. No regrets. All right. Um, don't look back, right? That's that. right. So I'm still grabbing these. Um, oh, all people day. ask me what I think is the best spec right now. These second prints for Invincible Iron Man number uh, nine are probably one of the best ones I can possibly think of. Riri's going to have two shows next year, right? I mean, people are going to start scrambling for stuff, and these can still be had in the sort of the 60 to 75 range. I know that's not cheap. Um, but I, I think it's the kind of stuff that yeah, but it, it, it'll 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 seem cheap then. Yeah, why did yeah. why why wasn't I buying those you know twelve months ago? And then the last one, a book that I've chased for a long time. And I talked earlier on about my love for for Scarlett Johansson, but this this book is a oh. is a right. And I know Jessup loves this one. And no, the cover is you white on the back, <laughs> but, I, but I may get I, I may pay for an artist to draw um, what you suggested. Um, uh, but um, uh, this is a one in 15, another book that was far rarer than its ratio would suggest. You never see it. And I chased it for a long time. I finally tracked one down. So um, nice. that would be a $50,000 book. <laughs> if, uh, actually. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so that that's it. Um, 
listen, guys, I, I, get a bow out. I get a bow out, but um, uh, good stuff. And uh, I'll check up your pick, check your pickups when this thing goes live. Um, good night. Good night. Cool, guys. See, see you next week. All right, Dang. I guess I'm next, right? Yeah, I mean, it's up to you if you want to go next or. Yeah, sure. No, I, I, I'm ready. Cool. Um, I'll go through them. So we got Transformers, the movie, newsstands, one, New two, stand. and three. Yeah. Nice. Th th those were nice. Uh, let's see. I'm going to skip that. Um, here's, here's, here's one I like. This is Champion. Champions 25, um, Viv Vision. Um, the Battle Lines variants, I, I think we're going to, th that's what these were called, uh, the Battle Lines. Um, I think we're going to see a, a number of these heat up because you just don't see them that, that much. I, I can't forget if they were qualifiers or open order. Um, if I had a hand free, I'd check on Diamond. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'd say keep but your eyes out. Hmm? Those are the young gun variants, right? No, uh, no they're the battle okay. lines. I, I forget what okay. was that based on a video game or something? Oh, um, I guess like maybe the app or whatever. Is that what it's called? Battle lines? Okay. I, I don't sure. know. Don't, I, yeah, don't, don't ask me. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure either, but there's a ton of great ones. Like they, yeah, and, yeah, I think definitely. they did it for every title too. It was probably like two or three years ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't that long ago. Um, Marvel's been putting out these Marvel tales. They're they're reprints, but um, they've got some beautiful covers. Um, and and they're they're expensive. I think they they retail for like eight ninety nine or nine ninety nine, something like that. So I think there's some potential there. I mean, because they they reprint some key stories and then they add on some really nice cover art. This is a Bartel cover. Um, so. Uh, and and they're easily damaged. Like I've ordered a few directly from Diamond, and um, I, I, I never I, I, I never get good luck with them. So I, I, because maybe because of their thickness, or you know maybe I'm not ordering a lot of copies, so they just get smushed. Um, let's see. Uh, same thing with this one uh, with Wolverine. This is in Hulk Lee. Uh, I know there's a Virgin one in hundred. I think they did Virgin one in hundreds for all of them. Yeah. Uh, I think there's even ones coming out to this day. Um, let's see. Uh, like I think, yeah, I have to give a shout out. I know Topher wrote about these a long time ago in CBSI. Um, so Omni Man appears in Supreme sixty seven. There, there he is on the cover from Invincible. And I, I believe he has like a cameo on. Um, oh no, he's on the cover too of sixty six. It looks like. Huh. Um, so that's kind of cool. I think those are starting to heat up. Um, let's see, we've got um, a Doctor Voodoo uh, mini series. I thought this was only three issues, but then I went to look. This is like five issues. Uh, very very cool cover art. Uh, I'd be curious to, to read that. Um, another shout out to Topher. I think he had, uh, uh, he's at um, uh, uh, Comic Book True First or Ca Comic Barricade on IG. Um, I believe he posted this one just uh, in the past day or two. I believe, uh, and I wish Ben were still on. I, I'd ask him if he knows about this, but I, and I'm, I'm, I'm very anxious to read this as well. From what I understand, um, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, uh, Isaiah Bradley, but Isaiah Bradley in a different, um, reality. Um, so, um, maybe next time I'll be able to, uh, talk more about the contents of the book, but I just picked it up. Speaking of Isaiah Bradley picked up a truth too. When I got to the register, the, the fellow there, he was like, Huh. I thought we, <laughs> I didn't know there were any of these left and yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, uh, how I came, but Hey, truth two, that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, uh, to be I honest, know. I thought my truth number one, like way too early. I, 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 I think it was, um, maybe in January. To totally regret it. Um, picked up some, uh, cheap spawns. 
There's a 218. Uh, there's a 266. Uh, this has uh, not only spawn, but also has Savage Dragon and Ant on it. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? And, and just barely a 270 uh, black and white, like pre-270. Like Right. People weren't buying them then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, I, I wish Carter were on here because I know I know he'd appreciate some of these. Here's here's a really cool one that I I found, and I, it actually apparently sells for a lot of money. Um, Scarface photo variant, or well, cover B, right? I IDW, yeah, cover B. So Look, you already found cool. the buyer, man. Yeah, <laughs> there's a guy in town who does uh, celebrity signings. He did one this last year with Pacino, and I really. Just I wanted to get that cover, Pacino, CGCSS, didn't happen. Oh, man. Well, maybe maybe they'll get him again. Um, I mean, there's got to be a role for Pacino in the MCU, right? I mean, everyone else is popping up in those roles. Right. Um, Scotty Young, Nova One. Um, see. Yeah, that's a nice book. Picked up two of those, actually. Um, Image United, a uh, Spawn cover. I think this is uh, commands a pretty nice price, and then I think this was also in tow for a CBSI article. Um, wouldn't have known about it otherwise. And this was a couple of years ago he wrote about it. Uh, D Dynamo Five. Uh, so you've got Invincible appearing in there, and then whoops, see I never can do that. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, and he's also on. There he is. I was covering him up with my finger. Another cover. So, as, as and I, you know, I've watched two two of the episodes uh, so far. Loving it. I, I had already read this series probably a year or so ago. Thought it was really compelling. I, I think there's um, there's a lot of potential there, and especially for some of these offbeat uh, type books where uh, Omni-Man or Invincible or one of the Invincible Universe uh, characters makes an appearance. So um, that's all I'm going to cover tonight. All right. Who's up next? I'll go quick. That's all right. All right. So um, most of what I buy, it, I buy to sell. I, I do have my own personal collection, but... Um, my focus lately has been selling. Um, there are two. You're images. smart. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, right now, it seems like you should be holding on to everything and let it just raise in price. You know what I mean? But um, there's a, Image doesn't do a lot of late printings for, for a lot of their books. There are a couple series where I try to chase um, some late printings. Middle West is one. Uh, and lately, excellence. There's kind of there are some rumors about whether or not there's an unannounced option for excellence. This is just their A cover number one. Um, a lot of these, I think this is the third print. Uh, pretty low, low print count on a lot of these. This is the second print of number two. I kind of cleaned out G Mart. <laughs> uh, five copies of that one. Nothing wrong with that. And then <laughs> in printing of number three, these are not original art for the the second prints. They just modified the colors. But okay. I really like the design. I know Kiri Randolph is in, uh, involved in that and getting it made into a screen version. So I'm happy to have those. Um, speaking of retailer variants that I just grabbed because the art is is amazing i think we were talking about this one on uh, uh was this from i didn't you know it's sad when i didn't even know where i bought the stupid thing <laughs> i want to say this is from the artists like an artist's own retailer variant for uh I can't new, kale it new? oh kale new okay ngu yeah what but, wasn't that for WonderCon? it may be it may be yeah i just loved it and the color carnage always sells no matter what. Um, was digging at the LCS 
And this hit three boxes. It hit the Captain America Sam Wilson. Uh, Tula Lote did the art. Who's She's one of the artists that I kind of chase anything she does. And then we got a, a, a cover featuring Shuri, which is another one. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Sam Wilson, Captain America number 12 variant. Um, Scout has been putting out these VHS ver variants for a lot of their books. Um, this is one that's kind of intrigued me recently. I started picking up maybe for no good reason necessarily, but just for the hell of it. So uh, when I started selling stuff, I was doing a lot of mystery boxes. Believe it or not, I was, and I still have a whole bunch downstairs. I sell stuff on eBay, sell stuff on Amazon. That stuff sells great on Amazon. Um, but one of the mystery boxes that I subscribed to was the Stan Lee box. Uh, it it went under about two years ago or three years ago now, maybe. Uh, and he uh, supposedly you could get Stan Lee signed stuff, which I never found any any of. <laughs> But every month they had a variant of a Marvel comic that was a Stan Lee variant. So it's officially a retailer variant for that um, uh, for that program, that Stan Lee program. But they all they all had a cameo from Stan himself. Uh, one that I sold way back for forty bucks that I kind of regretted selling. I found uh, slabbed in a nine point eight this this last month, but <laughs> one fifty one. And I'm not going to be selling this one. I'm going to hold on to this one just for the hell of it. It's not signed or anything, but uh, still, still cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. I, even even Dude, just the, you know, the, I love those the, the custom labels. Yeah, no, I agree. Especially the Deadpool one is my favorite. <laughs> right. Every book's a nine nine with a Deadpool. Yeah, one, right? please. Right. <laughs> Uh, and then one of the other kicks I've been on recently is trying to figure out uh, what other Avengers we're going to see. I, I do think after, obviously we're getting young Avengers, the original Avengers, a lot of the contracts have come up, a lot more will be coming up. Um, I think we're bound to see some kind of, not necessarily West Coast Avengers, but an Avengers 2.0. Uh, we're going to see some other characters come in uh, to that senior team role. So yeah. I've been looking for, I mean, the Avengers roster in the history of Marvel comics is huge. You could go way, way back, but this is one I picked up for really cheap. Uh, this is incredible Hulk 265. This is the first appearance of firebird up, up here. Who's on the Avengers roster a native American character for many years. Also the first appearance of the shooting star, um, red. There's other, uh, not the first appearance of all of these characters necessarily, but yeah, I think that's a great idea. I actually this this week due to some books in a collection that that I got, you know, got me thinking about. You know, th there's no doubt they're going to introduce a, a Native um, American uh, character. Well, actually, is uh, is Echo a Native American? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, See, I'm doing my, my, my DC uh, <laughs> yeah. side, yeah, but uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think she, she's the last, you know. I think, I think that's a great, great uh, pick, Tony. Well, it, I mean, there are 9.8s of, you know, Copper Age books for less than $100. Yeah. I mean, that's a very, nowadays, that's a very low buy-in. Yeah. Know? Why not? Um, and then I guess the last one, uh, another character that we've kind of haven't heard much from is Mosaic. <laughs> About five years ago, but this is the one in 25 of his first appearance. Appearance um, just doesn't hurt to have it, I guess. At some point, we they will be rebooting the Inhumans. Uh, who knows no, we, we've but, got a fan up there with with Aaron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was my nomination. What last week? And yeah, then, uh, yeah. I think I think Bella's a pretty big fan of that pick too. So I mean, also like with uh, Miss Marvel too. So I think it's a good play. Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you some props because I think uh, I found some second prints of that first appearance as well. Nice. Yeah. 
on, on my retail. But... Cool. Uh, I think I to... think Aaron's got us all on that train. Oh man, I got you yeah. all on the second frame. Yeah, I think I have one somewhere too. Let's see if I yeah, can. Yeah, this find is it. a second. Yeah. Uh, oh, I put it up already. All right, I'll start with that. <laughs> We're all on the second print train. <laughs> nice. Well, well, I got a first and a second. The, okay. Um, so I went digging in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Um, I I got a pass to have a day to myself, and I got to go out and dig, and it was awesome. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, so I, I start off at this place in Dayton uh, called Second Charles, which it was the first Second Charles I've ever been to. Um, there, I see people post the same kind of finds they find there that I find at half price books. So I'm like super stoked to go. And I didn't really find that much. Um, I, I did find like some, um, 24 and issue 24 and 25 of, uh, Gwenpool, which Ben's already dipped out, but, uh, I'll show those off in a minute. Um, but and they, they had fried pie variants there, which is cool because in Columbus, Ohio, you don't get fried pie variants. They, they don't show up. Like, right. there's nowhere, they just don't make it here for whatever. But in Dayton, Cincinnati, I guess they do. So, uh, well, they, right, they so did, gonna, I think they discontinued them, but the, they only carry right, them even the, even the bigger books, a million and the second and Charles. So are what are yeah. what is what is what you're saying is you're not going to change your name to Second and Charles Crook? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't roll off the tongue. No. Nah. Um, so all right, I'll show these next as I showed you guys earlier. Um, I had never seen these before. Um, nice. And uh, I thought they were pretty cool. I was like, all right. So I I go to another shop in Dayton after that. Not a Second Charles, like an actual comic shop. And. Uh, I'd never been there. So like I start in the back cause I'm looking for SpongeBob comic books. Uh, and also fat outward comic books for my buddy James. And so I'll go back where the Archies and the Dells and the, any of the Disney books, four color stuff like, so I start going through there and I did find a ton, a ton of SpongeBob comic books. And this is the only place I've ever found a SpongeBob comic book. <laughs> in a comic book shop. Like I buy the rest off eBay, but, uh, dude, they had three, four, uh, five, two sixes. Um, with the earlier ones are really tough to find, and they, dude, it they're like three, four dollars a piece. Right. I'm like, yeah, I, I'll, I bought the whole stack. Nice. So every, every every one they had, I'm trying to put it together just because. Uh, I, I love SpongeBob. I think he's awesome. Uh, a little comic relief when you have young ones and you, oh yeah, you know, they want to watch TV and say, "All right, I can totally dig on this." Um, they also uh, it, it sucked, man. I was at this store a long time. Like I, I went out and took smoke breaks and like I would just take my stack to the table and set it down. The guys like, "Oh, are you all set to go?" I'm like, "No, nah, I'm gonna go out and have Sarah real quick because I'm I'm gonna go through every book you have in this place. I'd never been there. It was awesome." <laughs> So, and I do just that. Like I keep going up there with stacks and cause uh, it, it was like, almost like nobody had gone through their back issues in a while and wait till I'll, I'll save the best for last. But uh, all of these hip hop variants were oh, still wow. in their, uh, still in their long boxes. And I'm wow. like, and in fairly decent shape, like um, it's it's hard to pull a hip hop nine eight, and right, yeah. some some right. of their stuff wasn't bagged and boarded, uh, just bagged. Um, there there wasn't any loose stuff, but uh, they had a couple of the the highlights. Like we had a spider, and like they had a big sticker across the top said variant, but they were like six ninety nine, which is what my LCS priced their hip hop variants at when they came out unreleased like there was you never got a you know you never got one of yeah i'm sure you have some qualifiers in there too then probably if no one's dug through there oh dude i mean it, it was like nobody goes through nobody went through the stuff in a while so anyways so i talked to dennis like i wanted to have a cigarette and i 
I, I called Dennis. I was like, hey, have you ever been to this place? He said, yeah, yeah, I know that guy. He's like, uh, it's like, man, it's like, it's like no one's been through here at all. And he's like, oh, he's like, well, you know, if you see, especially the hip hop covers, like, you know, grab me one and yeah, sure. No problem. So I started throwing doubles and then finally like runs the second prints, like doubles and triples and quadruples. So like I'm throwing all this stuff up on this table because I'm like, I'll take it all. You know, uh, I missed the little cue card that they had by the register that said we limit uh, one one copy per person because I haven't checked out yet. Like I was, mm. and also wasn't paying attention to the sign, but there was, and uh, and which I'm fine with. It, it's cool. Like I mean, I at least I get one copy. Like they they honor the price that you buy it at, but if you get another one, they're gonna go look it up. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, and I. Even, made the comments like yeah you're right dude because i was about to clean you out <laughs> everything <laughs> I, I probably had a short box uh stacked of, of books and i haven't even gone through their case yet or their wall books it's like i'll save that for last i'll go see what you got in the bins and, and i was bummed they had two long boxes of spawn books and i was like oh. yeah but it was all like pre-100 like, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, aren't you trying to complete a run? Like, you're pretty close, aren't you? Yeah, uh, yeah, shout out to Ben Stein, dude. He was at a, a he, he found a, a 183 recently, and uh, and I was like, dude, if you if you want to sell that, let me know. Like, like, I, I don't want to deal, just you know, I'll buy it at market value. Like, I'd rather buy it from him than someone on eBay. I'll go through a friend before I would, you know, just right. jump on eBay, right? So uh he's like no i'm gonna keep this one because dude that book is so hard it's a black front cover and it's a black back cover and the cool. black the backs are usually beat uh everyone on ebay if most people just don't even show the back cover like they just wow. give you a front cover pick and like yeah. no back cover. uh it's tough but uh he's like no no he's like but i did pass one up at another shop he's like it was 50 bucks i'm like dude i'll take it like if you, you know, don't go out of your way or whatever, but if you're heading back and it's still there, pick it up for me. I appreciate it. So thank you, Ben. Love you, Ben. That was awesome. <laughs> cool. Uh, so now I'm down to 11, 11 more books. And all right. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I have some books real quick. All right. Uh, so I got some store variants, actually, since we were talking about the uh, oh. subject. This is for the J. Scott Campbell uh, Joker. And then, you know, I had to get the controversial, like, quote unquote, like what social justice warriors are, are like arguing about saying that this is like racist, like uh, I, I didn't find it racist. So I was like, actually thought it was kind of talented. So the Kabuki makeup. Yeah. With the Kabuki makeup or whatever. Like, I think the person that was complaining wasn't even Asian. So I don't know why they get to, <laughs> <laughs> to complain about it. Right. Uh, I mean, that's just my opinion, but you know, yeah. uh, you know how we all love Bartel here, so I found the Nebula mm -hmm. One. Uh, second print, Extermination. I believe this is on the previous list. So yeah. how's the how's the condition? Every one I've found of those has like major like print problems. I don't see any too big of major problems. I'll have to check the That's back great. cover. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I thought I scored goal and uh -huh. got the. Return of Wolverine second print, and then yeah. I didn't open it, so I asked them to open it at the counter, and it's not the error version, so it's the corrected version. Oh. So are you all you familiar with the error? No, the no, I don't know. That. Okay, so in the Return of Wolverine second printing, there's Doctor Afra pages on the first and last page, so that wraparound is the wrong wraparound. Uh, oh. I have, yeah, I ha I have an error version, but hmm. I don't have a corrected one, so I was like, eh, I'll take it anyways. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting closer and closer to finishing my second print run of the Legacy. So this is the Old Man Logan. This is the uh, Venom one. So oh, cool! That's that's yeah. a really hard one to find. Uh, yeah, I just picked the bullet and bought it on eBay. So, but it was still less than fifteen bucks. I want to say so. Oh, I was like, kind of all right. Yeah, they're all hard to find. But yeah, I found this Captain America Deadpool variant. I <laughs> couldn't remember if I had this. Um, just like a giant completionist for Deadpool. So is that so, like an Alex Ross Deadpool variant? I think so. It looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. I can't tell who that signature is at the. Uh, 
Ha. Huh. Interesting. I don't, no, I don't think it is, but. Yeah, I have to look it up. Yeah, uh, I just kind of saw it. Yeah, for five okay. bucks, I was like, kind of like, well, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Uh, Nail biter number one. Oh. I found ten dollars. I used to love marker. that series. Yeah, I I think it got options for something or it was in production. Yeah, it did, but I yeah, haven't heard anything about it lately. Yeah, I'm a big Simpsons fan, so I found the McBain number one. <laughs> All right, McBain. <laughs> yep. So uh, I'm pretty sure I still have one when I bought it when it first came out, but I was like, yeah, might as well pick up an extra. I found this Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. I love this homage. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Mr. Longshore. I believe he talked about this on something, like either on Instagram or something like that. This is a Captain America 25 second print. So yes. I think I, I'm pretty sure I saw it on his Instagram. Yeah, and I think he had nominated it for the the top ten. For the oh, okay. And then I found a Star Wars Darth Maul, Son of Daphmir, number one. Uh, the, my first purchase nice. on Macari. So that's the Dark Saber book, right? Yeah. So the first uh, first appearance of that. Uh, I had two, three, and four found from my. Oh wait, I bought two from a friend. Three and four I found at a shop in my area. I've had pretty decent luck with Mercari. Not 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 a hundred not batting a hundred, but Yeah. It uh, the book needs a press if I'm gonna grade it. I'm not sure if I would still take that risk or not because of the black cover. Yeah. I wanna give a big shout out to Hive Comics. I won this from its drunken chat. I I wasn't on the <laughs> show and I was just participating in chat and then I happened to win this book and I was just kinda like I want a book after I just interviewed them. I don't know if I feel right about this, right. but <laughs> yeah. So I might give it away on here one day or next week. Uh, we'll just figure out the parameters for that or maybe on a uh, comic book food chain. I haven't decided yet either or. And then this is what I actually bought from Hive. They still had uh, Peach Momoko's nine eights for like half the cost of eBay. And I was like, kind of like, okay, well guaranteed nine eights. Like it's not bad. Uh, I love the series too. And then one last lab. So I bought the uh, America number two second right. print. Wow. Yeah. So thank you, Nico, for helping me spend money. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say about winning the Hive book, don't don't feel bad. The last time I gave a book away on Drunken Chat, the winner was uh, Dennis Barger from Wonder World Comics. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's a it's a small world. It's yeah. like, it's like everyone knows everyone, right? So yeah. That's true. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Make sure to catch Steve tonight on Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, you know, you almost oh, had yeah. me convinced us to change my name to what was it? CB twenty three. Yeah. yeah. Like that argument. Like I was just like, man, I might change my name now. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> doing it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, see y'all next week. Good night.